Hello everyone, this is Body Club Binks and welcome back to Let's Play The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles where we are continuing in the fifth chapter of the first game, The Adventure of the Unspeakable Story. I believe where we left off was that Iris uh, is questioning why Susato was like, oh yes, I'm so eager to read The Hound of the Baskervilles when nobody has mentioned the name of her manuscript. It's like, wait a minute, Susato, how do you know that? Susie, what did you just say? Um, you said The Hound of the Baskervilles, but... How could you know the full title? Well, that's, uh... Uh-oh. That's because Mr. Sato is such a great fan of all the stories about Mr. Holmes, of course. You're trying to cover for her, but come on, man. But Bruno, the Hound of the Baskervilles, has never been published. What? When I showed Shirley the manuscript, he told me that I wasn't allowed to publish it yet. Oh, really? Hmm, I wonder why. I don't understand. That's why he said that he'd keep it safe. Until it was the right time for the story to be made public, you see. That's interesting. And because this case is uh <clears throat> has to do with it clearly based on the title, I'm just wondering. Hmm. I'm wondering, guys. <laughs> I <clears throat> Okay. I have a few theories I'm going to talk about while I try to get my throat to clear. So, I'm thinking already, because we spent so much time building up because the murder hasn't happened yet, that, first of all, I think the murder is going to happen in the pawn shop, obviously, because we already have, like, investigated it, we got to know Mr. Windebank, we saw that exchange with uh, the mysterious Mr. Eggert Benedict, um... I feel like maybe, I mean, if if Benedict did it, it would be a little too obvious, but maybe it's just one of those that we know who did it, we just can't catch him right away or prove it. Um, and maybe the either the victim himself will be Mr. Windebank or he will be our defendant because, you know, he has that gun. So either maybe they'll make it look like a suicide, like he shot himself because he's always threatening to. Or that he actually had to shoot someone else and that's why we have to defend him. But I feel like this whole thing with the Hound of the Baskervilles. Like in the past with the story of the Hound of the Baskervilles, a lot of times they used the Hound itself as as a scapegoat, right? Like, they, they want to blame a murder on a, a big hound creature when, of course, it was an actual murder committed by a human. Um, so there's usually, like, a big cover-up going on and sometimes, like, some kind of, like, a drug or hallucinogen being utilized. So I'm just wondering if the reason that Sherlock doesn't want her to publish the story might actually tie back to why her father, Watson, was murdered. Because we still haven't closed up that case either, you know? Why did that, um, that woman, that British woman, murder him in the first case? We never got to know why. And it was, it was clearly some big, like, government-level conspiracy going on because the fact that it kind of felt like she was going to get away with it, like it was just a slap on the wrist or something, was really shady. So, 
the fact that he's not letting her publish the story is more fuel to that fire, you know? Um, so yeah, those are just some, some theories I'm coming up with right now. And I'm wondering if the reason that Susato might know about it is either two things. One, that she somehow peaked it already, like she already caught a glimpse of it before Sherlock put it in the pawn shop. Or her father might have slipped some information to her already regarding what happened to Dr. Watson. Um, so she already kind of knows about it. And I'm thinking because her father seems to have some kind of like political sway or, or something going on. So that's why I'm a little sus of Susato. Like, they are right now, clearly, but I feel like she knows more than she's letting on. And this might have to do with that that telegram she received at the beginning of this chapter that she refuses to tell us about. So, yeah, those are all my, like, big theories going on right now. I am <clears throat> intrigued to see. I think because it's summer and I'm having to have a fan on almost all day long... I think that's why my throat is getting dried out. So I'm drinking water, but I think tea might have been a little better. But it's too hot for tea. <clears throat> Alright. Until there was the right time for the story to be made public, you see. So that's why the manuscript is at Windowbanks. And yet, how could Susie here know its title? Well, Shirley, what's going on? Oh, did he let her read it? I don't know. Because she's a big fan of his, so maybe maybe he just gave in? I don't know. Oh. What is it, Mr. Holmes? It would appear our guest has arrived. Oh, perfect timing, Gina. Huh. We didn't get to hear more. All right. Miss Lestrade, you know, it's kind of rude to say you're not coming and then to show up anyway. <laughs> Tsundere. This was a bad idea. I knew I weren't welcome. I'm going. Damn. No, wait, Miss Lestrade. We've all been eagerly awaiting your arrival. Haven't we, Iris? Aw, oh, they look sad and awkward. Come on, Iris. Oh, yes. Just wait there, Jimmy. We'll have everything ready in a jiffy. Come along, Susie. I may be upset with you, but we need to put on a brave face for our guest. Right, of course. It's a pleasure to see you here, Miss Lestrade. Please, make yourself at home. Don't stand in the doorway, my dear girl. Come along in. What say you to some Mendelssohn? I won't take no for an answer. Mendelssohn it is, then. <laughs> I think he's talking about the violin. But didn't he say it was Stradivarius? Eh, whatever. Oh wait, Mendelssohn is the composer, maybe? <laughs> oh, you're so freaking cute! You are adorable, I love you. Such a good kitty. <laughs> that evening, Iris prepared us all a meal that was even more delicious than usual. Mr. Holmes's violin performance was in no way meddlesome, and Gina, as we came to call her, taught us all how to steal things from one another without being noticed. Oh, hey, that's a handy skill to have. You might, you never know, you might need that. Everyone thoroughly enjoyed themselves. 
well into the night. Aww, they're like a happy little family. They got some issues they gotta work through, but that's still really cute. April 15th, 9.34 p.m., Naruhodo's Legal Consultancy. That was a very enjoyable evening, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Iris's cooking was truly divine. And I feel as though I can still hear the enchanting strains of Mr. Holmes's violin even now. Best of all, I bet I could steal the glasses from his lordship's face next time we're in court. I don't think you should do that, but okay. Naruhodo-san, could I consult with you about something, I wonder? Hey, finally! You're gonna tell us about... Is it, is it about the manuscript? Or about the... Um... Telegram? What's the matter, Susato-san? It's... About the telegram I received. Ah... Oh. The one that arrived first thing this morning, I suppose. I've... I've been summoned. What? Summoned? What do you mean? The telegram was from the Lord Chief Justice's office. Lord Strongheart has asked to see me. Oh, well that's not good. The Lord Chief Justice? When? Tomorrow morning. What? Then... Then we have to start preparing at once. Oh! No, that won't be necessary, Naruhodo-san. I've been summoned alone. Alone? What on earth for? I have no idea. I suppose I shall find out tomorrow. What's all this about? No wonder she's worried, but... She should have just told him. Whatever it is, it's making me feel very uneasy. Well? Oh, who could that be, I wonder? Oh! Good evening, friends! Ah. Oh. Iris, hello again. And Gina. Ah. And Gina, too. Yes, Jenny's going to stay with us tonight. She's going to sleep in with me. Isn't that right, Jenny? Well, yeah. <laughs> How lovely. Let me make a pot of tea. You know, I've learnt so much today. Oh, what in particular? All those things Ginny showed us. Wasn't it wonderful? Ah, uh, you mean all those pickpocketing techniques? We had fun trying them out on each other, didn't we? I think I've awakened a natural talent. I could earn a living from it. You might be getting ahead of yourself a little there. So, what brings you up to our humble quarters at this late hour? <sighs> Excuse me. Well, you see, I came to return this. Oh. Wait, what? That... that's mine! Oh my, however did you... I told you, didn't I? I have a natural talent for it. Oh yes, I've forgotten. <laughs> Iris literally is a child genius. So anyway, here, you can have it back. Not that I really understand why you wear it, though. Uh, thank you. Alright then, 
Good night. Yes, good night. Mm, she's tempted to keep bothering Susato about the manuscript. Mm, so this is your office, is it? Did she never ever come up here? What do you think, Jenny? I think I wouldn't fancy my chances with a lawyer what lives in a place like this. Yes, me too. <laughs> It seems as though Iris here still has something she'd like to talk about. Yep. I suppose she probably wants to talk about the manuscript. Yes, I suppose she probably does. Alright. So cute. Iris, I... I suppose you're hoping to talk about the manuscript, aren't you? Aren't you going to tell me? I'm so sorry. I need a little more time, please. Why? Alright, I understand. I hope I haven't made you feel awkward. Oh no, not at all, Iris. Not at all. I'm the one who did something wrong, clearly. <laughs> I don't know what all this is really is about, really, but... It's a story you made up, is it, Iris? This, uh, mental script or whatever you call it? It's not exactly a story that I made up. It's something I read in Daddy's diaries. Daddies? That's right. I don't suppose I've mentioned it to you before, Jenny, but... My daddy was Shirley's assistant once. His partner. Eh? They solved all sorts of strange and mysterious cases together. I is that right, mister? Apparently so. I was as surprised as you are, though. And Daddy wrote all the details of every single case down, you see, in his diaries. So I study them and write my stories based on what actually happened. So, where's the old man now, then? Aw, we know he's dead. He had to go away on urgent business to a faraway land, and he'll be gone a very long time. So, I've never really met him. He could have sent letters, man. Oh, right. Come to think of it. I don't know anything about Gina's parents either. Perhaps we should ask her. A lot of sad orphan children here, I guess. Well, at least two of them. Not sure about Nerhodo himself. Typical. Just like with his uh, descendant, Phoenix, we really don't get to know Phoenix's family backstory ever. Iris, this Hound of the Baskerville story. I take it that it's another tale inspired by your father's accounts? That's right. I thought it was fascinating. It's actually one of the, the most popular and famous uh, Sherlock Holmes stories. But it's different, somehow, from the other cases, I mean. Oh? How? I don't really know, but it must be special in some way. Because after I'd written it and showed the manuscript to Shirley, he turned as white as a sheet. It was the first time I've ever seen him like that. I feel like, yeah, that... Something must have happened, some kind of cover-up, some kind of big secret conspiracy, and that has to be why Watson was murdered. Hmm. It pains me to have to say this after you've toiled over it for so long, Iris, but this story must not be published at this time. 
under any circumstances. But why not? It's one of my best works. I'm not at liberty to say, not now. So please do not ask me. All right then, I won't. But I do solemnly swear that I will explain everything one day, Iris, when the time is right. Hmm, I think that day is going to have to be uh, coming up very soon. And that's how the manuscript came to be with Mr. Windebank, isn't it? Yes. Shirley said it had to be somewhere very safe. Now I'm wondering if the manuscript is what's going to be what causes the murder to happen. Rather than the disc? Hmm. Because the police already took the disc and Gina has the coat. So for someone to still be killed at the pawn shop means something else there must be the reason, you know? And all I can think of is the manuscript, so... Hmm. Maybe there's like a password or something in there? Like something that they need? Some kind of information? That really gets my goat, that does. He's treating you like a child. Well, she is a child. It's mean, that's what it is. Keeping secrets like that. I'm sure Mr. Holmes isn't trying to be mean. Eh? If he said he wasn't at liberty to talk about it, I'm sure there must have been a very good reason. I think so, too. You lot are too trusting for your own good. But he can't pull the wool over my eyes. Holmes is lying to Iris. I bet my life on it. What? Shirley's lying to me? Don't upset her. Okay. Uh... Hmm. Oh. So I think we have to click on Gina. Okay. I've realized that I don't know anything about your parents, Gina. I ain't got any, have I? Never did. Never did have. Oh. Look, the East End's full of orphans like me. No one wants nothing to do with us from the minute we're born. Not even our mums. Oh. But we all stick together. The older ones look after the little ones and make sure they get by. So that's why you're a pickpocket. Yeah. Nah. Divin's, diving's my life. I love it. I get a kick out of it every time I lift some pompous idiot's purse. And that's how we all afford to eat. I'm like Robin Hood, ain't I? Ugh. Ain't I? That's how I see it. Oh, Gina. I do think about it sometimes. What it'd be like to have parents, I mean. I always thought it'd make everything right. But I haven't listened to what Iris just said. It sounds like having parents ain't always easy either. Oh. I mean, if you know you never had them, you don't feel like you're always wanting to meet them. Aww. It's true. I do want to see Daddy. So much. Oh, Iris. That's so sad. Our sad little babies. Gina, what did you mean when you said that you know Mr. Holmes is lying to Iris? Well, 
irrecognizably pop that mantle script or whatever, right? But come on, that's obviously a load of rubbish. Oh my, why would you think that, Gina? It's simple. If that story was really an old Windabank storeroom, there's no way someone from halfway around the world, in other words, you, could know about it. Oh. Are you trying to say that he actually did have it published? But that's weird. Hmm. Ah. Sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, he sold it. Without telling you. But Shelley would never do something like that. I'm sure of it. That's weird. Huh. Grown-ups do a lot worse than that, believe me. Bare-faced liars, a lot of them. You just ain't realized it yet. I'm telling you, the mantle script ain't at Winderbanks. You'd soon see if you had a look. Even if you think you can trust him, I don't. That Holmes is a liar like the rest of them. You're just making her upset. If I'm honest, I have wondered if Shirley's telling me the truth sometimes. See? Oh, but I don't mean that I think he sold it. I mean that I sometimes wonder if he might have hidden my manuscript somewhere. Somewhere I don't know. Even though it's wrong of me to doubt him. Don't be too hard on yourself, Iris. Oh my goodness, look at the time. Come along, Ginny. We should go back downstairs. Yeah, alright. And please, don't mention any of this to Shirley, will you? No, of course not. Good night then, Iris. Good night, Gina. You must let me make breakfast for you tomorrow morning. I insist. Oh, yes, please. I can't wait, Susie. Good night then. I guess she'll have to make it before she leaves to meet with uh, Lord Strongheart. Iris, it sure is easy to forget, isn't it? Sometimes she speaks just like an adult. But deep down, she's still just a child. Well, I think it's time that I turned in... Ooh, weird voice. What did I do? Well, I think it's time that I turned in for the night, too, Nerohoro-san. Okay. Dr. John H. Watson, Iris's father but also the name of the murdered visiting professor at Yume University. It can't be a mere coincidence. There's something deeper going on. Hmm. Okay, it's auto-scrolling. Are we done? Stir Naruhodo. Oh, I thought we were going to uh, to be continued. Mr. Naruhodo. That voice. That's Mr. Holmes. What's going on? It's the middle of the night. It's Miss Miss. Ugh. Sorry. It's Miss Lestrault. She's gone. Gina? She was supposed to be sleeping in Iris's room, but her bed is empty. Well, she's an independent young woman. She probably decided to go home, no? I think not. From speaking to her before she retired, I received the distinct impression that she was looking forward to breakfasting with Mr. Sato. 
No, I don't believe the girl has gone home. But I've been waiting for over an hour now. Uh-oh. Hmm, did she go to Windabanks? The only reason I can think of is that she was so desperate and determined to prove that Sherlock was lying about the manuscript that she went to go look for it. That's really bad, Gina. Either that or she's looking for the disc. But that would be at the police office. Or, you know, the police station because she knows that the detectives took it. Hmm. I don't know. I have a bad feeling. The murder is finally going to happen. Oh, shoot. Is Gina going to be involved? Over an hour. Oh. If you'll indulge me, look out of the window, my dear fellow. What's this about? Yeah, there's a light. They can see it from their window? Isn't it like on the same side as them? So for them to be able to see that would be weird. That seems a little... Like the angle and everything? Hmm. Wait a minute. Why is there a light on at this time of night? That's Mr. Windebanks, pawn breakery. Mr. Windebanks. Oh boy, so I was right? Did she break in? Oh no. Yeah, that she thinks he has it. There's no way that she would know about it. Yeah. We just saw this. Come on, man. Could Gina have gone? It seems you have some knowledge of the situation, Mr. Norahodu. Sorry? Oh, no, no, not really. Well, anyway, we must investigate. At once? Who said this? Oh, she must have heard. Mr. Sato. I don't know how close we are to to be continue. I think I'm going to keep going for a little bit. April 16th, 1.14 a.m. Baker Street. Might be a longer episode. The door to Windabanks. It's open. And the lamp is burning. It must be Gina, mustn't it? Let us hope it's nothing more sinister. What? Come. Not a moment to lose. Clearly, something is afoot inside. Maybe Gina went there and she happened to interrupt someone who was gonna steal? Is Mr. Windermink gonna be there? Like, does he live above the shop or does he live elsewhere? There's no one here. Oh, yes. There is. Oh, shoot! Mr. Holmes! Mr. Holmes! Did he get shot? What the? Has, has Holmes been shot? Leave me, Mr. Nolhodu. But... After them, go! Right. Oh, shit. Sorry, I'm, I'm just like, whoa, I was not expecting that. There was two, two guys there, clearly. Not Gina, so... And that didn't look like Edgar Benedict's outline. Blast! I've lost them. Hello, hello, what have we here? Is it Gina? Oh, it's a cop. The alarm was just raised from this pawnbroker, sir. Would you know something about that? Officer, come with me. It's my friend, Mr. Holmes. He's been shot. Shot? Sure. I'm sorry, Mr. Bobby. You're going to have a, a rough night. <laughs> With the policeman close behind me, I ran back to Windabanks. Oh? Is this a cutscene? Uh, 
Mr. Jones! Mr. Narado! How bad is it? That... Never mind me, but there's much at stake. Behind that door. In the storeroom. Hurry! How did he know? Wait, it's closed. Oh shoot, he's dead. I knew it. I did say it earlier. <gasps> Gina! It's Gina! Oh shoot. Ah, there's the to be continued. I, I had a feeling I should keep going. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, we know Gina didn't do it, but of course they're going to accuse her of doing it. And the door was locked, wasn't it? <sighs> locked room mystery. Typical, typical. All right. I didn't think we were going to have two of those in this game. But thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope Sherlock's going to be okay. Of course he can't die. He's too important. Um, damn, that sucks though. <laughs> Oh, Gina, why? Why? If only she hadn't decided she had to go there. Well, I think we'll have probably, hopefully, a short investigation section since we already know quite a lot of what's going on. I feel like this is one of those few times where we happen to know a lot already. Because um, this is, like, directly involved with us. So... After a short investigation, hopefully we can finally get to the trial. But thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, have a nice day. Bye-bye.